SMT Nation, we back in this video. We're going to take a quick look at the AT&T Q2 2022, and it's it's major. It's big. Uh, I mean, I expected a good quarter. That's my expectation from AT&T. They're much more competitive. Uh, they are um, more engaged in the marketplace when it comes to customer acquisition. It, it was huge based on what we've been seeing from them in the recent history. I mean, they just positive momentum here. All right, so let's talk about it in this video today. I'm going to go ahead and link this article in the description. Of course, you can go to the AT&T earnings report PDF that's actually on their webpage if you want to see the details, but I got them all here for you guys today. So let's do this. All right, when it comes to the second quarter highlights, the main takeaway here is that the company posted massive postpaid phone net ads. The best Q2 in over 10 years. They also killed it in fiber. They continue to gain customers in both of these segments. So from the mobility side, when we're talking about wireless customers, uh, they had a really strong quarter. I'm going to give you the details. On the fiber side, also a very strong quarter. All right. Now, when it comes to revenue stuff, this is for like the investors of the world. Uh, they, they made tons of money. All right. Almost $30 billion in revenue. Uh, there was a ton of cash. I think cash from operations is like almost $8 billion. Uh, free cash flow now over $1 billion for the quarter. I mean, it was at $1.4 billion. So like those things will make investors very happy. Uh, in terms of the specific items from the mobile side, all right, so we're talking about AT&T's communications business, 813,000 postpaid phone net ads. Those are the profitable, valuable kind to the company. Over 1 million postpaid net ads total, 196,000 prepaid phone net ads. So they've got growth in the postpaid business and also the prepaid business. Postpaid phone churn, 0.75. Something tells me that's going to be industry best. I would be shocked if Verizon approaches that number. I would be extremely shocked if, if uh, T-Mobile posted a similar number. All right, revenues are up 5.2% year over year. Service revenues up 4.6%. Equipment revenues up 7.2%. Operating income is up 6.2 billion. All right. EBITDA is up 2.5%. Operating income margin, 31.2%. Lots of winning there, guys and gals. Uh, business wireline also very profitable, 12.7% operating income margin. All right. So uh, consumer wireline, we're just talking about the home internet. 316,000 fiber net ads. Fiber penetration is now approaching 37%, continues to be a winner for them. Uh, broadband revenues are up 5.6% year over year. Uh, the fiber revenue specifically is up 28%. You could see why they're big on fiber. Broadband ARPU growth up 5.3%. I want to look for a couple of more uh, bits and pieces here of something maybe that I didn't cover here in these highlights. Uh looking for something specifically to see if there's anything unique. Uh, I do see 238,000 other net ads. Those could be IOT devices. Those could be connected vehicles. I do see 7,000 postpaid tablet and other branded computing device net ads. Those could be like Apple watches and stuff like that. Uh, postpaid churn 0.93 postpaid phone churn 0.75 uh, the postpaid churn was less than 3% in prepaid. All right, so that's really good. That might end up being industry best. Cricket, even lower than 3%. All right, so Cricket appears to be a winner. I think that's something that we often overlook. Postpaid phone ARPU, all right? This is the profitable piece. $54.81. That's up 1.1% a year ago during Q2. It says due to improved international roaming and a mixed shift to higher price than limited plans, They've been able to improve those margins. And I think that's something important to note. Uh, the, the CFO spoke to the margin improvement in the quarter, and they're saying expect an even bigger Q3 for margin improvement. In terms of the first net, they're now at 3.7 million customers on first net, over 21,000, approaching 22,000 agencies. And uh, they're working to cover 99% of the U.S. population. I think they're approaching that with 2.81 million square miles covered continues continues to be very strong for them uh wow 
Uh, in terms of consumer wireline, they've got winning there. In terms of business wireline, they always win there. That continues to be strong for them. In terms of Latin America, it's a much smaller piece of their business. Uh, so I don't even know if that's really relevant for many of you. But, you know, you can go to the investor page and look at the PDF and see all the details there. Guys and gals, we have ourselves a huge quarter for AT&T. They beat the earnings forecast. They killed every segment of their business. They've already spun off all the non-wireless and non-wireline business elements. So they are a focused company with good momentum. And I think we got to call a spade a spade. Some of us, including myself, were concerned about price increases and how that was going to harm their business. It looks like there has been zero impact of those cost increases to the legacy plans or whatever else that has been going on. It has not shown itself in any of these numbers. So calling a spade a spade, the concerns about them losing customers and losing momentum and people leaving the company, uh, it, there is no proof or evidence showing that here based on these numbers. This shows me growth. This shows me profitability. Uh, there are no free lines involved in any of this. These are all legitimate ads. AT&T is absolutely crushing it. They're more competitive than Verizon. Uh, they obviously care to grow, which is unlike Verizon. And they're essentially a profitable version of T-Mobile at this time. I don't think there's any other way to slice it. All right, you look at these numbers, these are legitimate, and they've got massive business segments. They grow in wireless, they grow in wireline, they make money in wireless, they make money in wireline, and nothing really negative has impacted them. Not offering HBO Max anymore with their elite plan, which switched to premium, you know, costs going up uh, on a couple other legacy plans. It has not impacted them at all. We'll see what happens in Q3, but they are cooking with gas. The Death Star continues its positive momentum. Comment down below. You all are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on that bell notifications icon so you never miss an upload. When I do uh, post on the next couple of videos, we're looking for the Verizon quarters and T-Mobile quarters. Those two are next. Keep it tuned to the channel. Uh, check out some of the links in the description for my Twitter handle, my Gmail address for business inquiries, and my Patreon page if you want to support us and get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.